When considering how single, double and triple covalent bonds are formed, it's useful to remember that any chemical process is likely to result in the elements following the octet rule. And this states that atoms tend to gain a valence shell with eight electrons. Specific to covalent bonding, atoms achieve this by sharing electrons. So let's have a look at an example. The first example we'll look at is the formation of a chlorine molecule, Cl2, from two chlorine atoms. So let's first represent this using some simple Bohr models which show the electron shells as circles. In this case I'll show just the outer shell. So there are my two chlorine atoms. And in order for both atoms to complete the octet rule, they will only need to share one electron each before they have both achieved those eight electrons in their outer shell. For example, the chlorine atom on the left in my molecule, you can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. And for the right-hand chlorine, we could do the same thing. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. To save myself a bit of time and to avoid drawing circles representing shells, it's better to represent these as Lewis diagrams where I simply draw the electrons as dots or crosses around my element symbol. Because in a chlorine molecule only one pair of electrons is being shared, we call this a single bond. Let's now look at a second example. In this example we'll look at how an oxygen molecule, O2, is formed from two oxygen atoms. Let's again start with a simple Bohr model of my atoms. Because oxygen is in group 16, you'll notice it only has six valence electrons. So if, like in the previous example, these atoms overlap to share just one electron each, we'd end up with something like this. And the problem here is that if I count the electrons for either of those atoms in the molecule, I can only find one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. And this would be true of the oxygen on the right as well. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons only. And the octet rule suggests that they should probably end up with eight. So what we're going to do is we're going to redraw the diagram, but this time each oxygen atom is going to share two of its electrons. Now, if I count those electrons again for the oxygen on the left, I've got one, let's try that again, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons. And the same for the atom on the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. So by sharing two pairs of electrons, each oxygen atom has now gained a full outer shell. And again, it's more useful in IB chemistry to represent these as a Lewis diagram, not a Bohr model, so let's do that. And you might note that in the final Lewis diagram of the oxygen molecule, I've spread out the non-bonding pairs of electrons to keep my diagram clear. But it doesn't actually matter where you put them, as long as they're next to the right atom. So because I am sharing two pairs of electrons in this case, we call this a double bond. Let's now look at a third example. In this example, let's consider how a nitrogen molecule, N2, is formed from two nitrogen atoms. So let's first draw the Bohr model of the two nitrogen atoms. They're in group 15, so they'll have five valence electrons. And just like before, let's first of all try overlapping these atoms so that they share just one pair of electrons. And let's just count the valence electrons for the atom on the left. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six electrons, which is not currently achieving the octet rule. So let's try again, but this time have the nitrogen atoms sharing two pairs of electrons. Again, let's count the electrons, the valence electrons for the atom on the left. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're getting closer to eight valence electrons, but we're not there yet. So let's try one more in this case. Let's try sharing three pairs of electrons between them. And now counting the electrons on the left, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. 
and let's double check the atom on the right. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. So we've now managed to form a molecule which has achieved the octet rule for both atoms. Of course, we now need to represent this with Lewis diagrams, so let's do that. And in this case, because we're sharing three pairs of electrons between the atoms, we call this a triple bond. Let's now summarise the key points in this video. Firstly, in covalent bonding, atoms will share pairs of electrons and tend to achieve the octet rule. Remember that there will be some exceptions to this. When atoms share just one pair of electrons, we call it a single covalent bond. When two pairs of electrons are shared, we call it a double bond. And, of course, with three pairs of electrons, we'd call it a triple covalent bond. In IB chemistry, you'll be required to represent these as Lewis diagrams, which are much clearer when dealing with complicated examples. For information on how this relates to bond length and bond strength, you want to see the next video in the playlist. Hopefully, this video has been of some help.